We're celebrating 10 years of the Texas Clipper, serving as an artificial reef for the marine life and people of Texas. These divers are visiting the most complex artificial reef Texas Parks and Wildlife Department has ever created. In just one year, thousands of fish have made this their new home. The Texas Clipper has become an ocean oasis. Okay guys, today's dive is your nose know, to the Texas Clipper. There are three must-see parts of this dive. The first is Tim O'Leary owns and operates the American Diving Center on South Padre Island. He takes sport divers out to explore the Texas Clipper, which now teems with marine life. Texas Parks and Wildlife has taken a section of the Gulf of Mexico that was once a barren desert and created an enormous ecosystem of some 180,000 square feet of substrate to bring new life for both the fishermen and the divers. I never thought it would happen. <laughs> I, I am, uh, I'm ecstatic. And for me, this is like a, uh, uh, an unbelievable dream come true for South Texas. And I, I'm just shocked it's in my own backyard. Over the past 60 years, the Texas Clipper has had three very different lives. She transported troops during World War II, carried the well-to-do across the Atlantic for leisure during the 50s, and then taught maritime cadets how to command a ship. Now she will spend her fourth and final life as an artificial reef, attracting marine life, scuba divers, and anglers. This is a world-class wreck. I want Texans and Texas to get excited. When Texas Parks and Wildlife acquired the Clipper, they spent a year cleaning it of all hazardous materials and creating openings for water flow and wildlife. She was then towed to the location of her final home, 17 miles from South Padre Island. When the ship started to sink, not everything happened according to plan. We spent 10 years planning this and everything rides on the sinking. And we're going to do controlled flooding to eliminate the use of explosives to protect marine life. But by using controlled flooding, at any point in time, something could go wrong and the ship could roll over on its side or roll upside down, which would be the last thing that we want to happen. The ship started to take on water on its port side, the left side, and uh, we assumed that the water would go across the ship to the other side, the starboard side, and equalize itself out. Uh, that wasn't the case. You know, it should be in an upright position, should be going down evenly. This was not what uh, we had bargained for. This is not what we had planned for for 10 years. As soon as the ship went down, it was obvious that it was laying on its port side. The sink plan called for controlled flooding, which would allow water to come in on both sides of the ship evenly. And as the ship took on water, the water never transferred to the starboard side, and it kept listing to port. Um, so that as the vessel went down, it basically went down bow first, the bow hit the bottom, and then it laid on its port side on the bottom. Hurricane Ike expected to make landfall late tonight or early tomorrow along the Texas coastline, including the possibility of... If sinking on its side wasn't enough, just 10 months later, Hurricane Ike flanked the Texas Clipper. It's believed that the very strong currents created by the hurricane caused a crack in the stern creating a 15-foot wide opening in the ship. From the perspective of being an artificial reef or marine habitat, the ship is functioning 
uh, it would be much better if it was in an upright position uh, where most of the marine life could be up in uh, the higher uh, water column where there's more light. South Padre Island. Now added to all the things you can do here are diving and fishing the Texas Clipper. It's a blast, I mean, to see uh, all the different type of fish life and the various uh, marine life, because you never know, each dive is different. We saw manta last time we were out here, uh, so there's no two dives that are exactly alike. No matter how many times you do it, it's different every single time. There will be a huge economic impact for both the town of South Padre Island and the dive shops throughout Texas, as well as the restaurants, the bars, the campgrounds, the gasoline station. The impact of the tourist dollar increase in this area will be enormous. Here at South Padre Beach Resort, we definitely have seen a positive impact ever since the Clipper has been sunk. Uh, the Clipper's been a great benefit to us. Um, you know, it's bringing in divers in November and December when we've never seen them before. Come here, fishy. And the fishing at the Clipper. They couldn't be better. The fish come in and they come in and they just keep coming in and keep coming in and they keep, uh, they breed there and they, this, this Clipper is going to be fantastic for this area. It, it really is. Artificial reefs are real, real good, huh? See this fish? Oh yeah, they're great. <laughs> Fish in Texas, baby! <laughs> the University of Texas at Brownsville, Department of Biological Sciences, is conducting a monitoring program. Morning, everyone. They are studying the health of the Texas clipper as an artificial reef. David Hicks and Carlos Centrobren Rostro are the co principal investigators. At least in this play that they are. Our role is we have a, a monitoring program in which we're basically documenting the transformation of the Texas Clipper as a steel ship into a living uh, biological reef. One aspect of our research is looking at the species that actually colonize the hull of the ship. And to document this, we are using a photographic technique. We also scrape certain areas of the ship and collect these same plants and animals and bring them back to the lab for uh, more definite identification. The ship is actually functioning as it is supposed to. It's becoming an artificial reef. We already start even seeing changes in the type of creatures that are moving into the neighborhood. And yes, it is working as it is supposed to be. The Texas Clipper now rests at her new home off the South Texas coast. In her previous 60 years of life, she was a military ship, a cruise liner, and a teaching vessel. She took care of her passengers and crew and carried them to ports all around the world. Now she is an oasis for her newest passengers, the marine life of the Gulf of Mexico. Just because it's sunk doesn't mean it's over. Uh, the ship has a whole life ahead of it. This was more than a ship. It touched so many lives. Now it'll live on as an artificial reef where it will benefit marine life and future Texans. We're here to look at the Clipper to see how it's progressed in its 10-year history. Well, for me personally, uh, having worked on this ship project, this is, this is quite an adventure to come back 10 years later and see that uh, it's a tremendous dive opportunity. It's, it's a great place for fishing and uh, it's a great place for marine habitat. It's a recreational dive for those who don't want to go too far down. 
uh, you can do a pretty decent dive around 60 to 80 feet. And for those who want to venture deeper, uh, even tech divers can go inside of the wreck. So I, I think it's a, a great uh, dive destination. Lots of marine life, a uh, lot of uh, coral, juvenile uh, reef species of, of all different types. Uh, you've got thousands and thousands of square feet of hard surface area, and you could see that where the marine life was growing on the ship itself. I would consider this a big success for an artificial reef. 